Uh, good evening to you and welcome to this program of Walter Rodney Groundings. I'm your host, Ian Abrams, and uh, uh, with me on my program this evening, I have two guests uh, from the historic village of Betapoacting. Uh, they have been guests here on the program before, but uh, they're here again because of some concerns that they have uh, with the administration of the affairs of uh, Better for Acting Triumph. Uh, I have Mr. Elton McCray, really no stranger to television and to the public, and uh, Mr. Rinsford Benfield, who is also a villager of Better for Acting. I want to welcome you gentlemen to the program. Good afternoon, Mr. Abrams. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to go into the homes of your audience. Yes, Mr. Benfield. I'd also Benfield. like to extend gratitude for allowing us to be here so we can share some of our concerns and hope that it bear fruit. Okay. Now, before we, we speak about BV, there is a national issue that I, I guess I'm going to ask you gentlemen to comment on. And that is the recent announce by Minister Ashni Singh of 7% increase for the year 2021 to public servants and uh, members of the armed forces and so on. Uh, what are your thoughts about the increase? Well, I will go first. Mm -hmm. I always believe that the people get the government they want because since that announcement I've heard not one public servant, not one military officer, and I know quite a few, and nor policemen say, mention that we are not satisfied. However, on, from my uh, standpoint, I think it's just an insult because with the levels of inflation that we've been experiencing, recently I know building materials went up over 50 percent market prices went up about 30 to 40 percent and to tell me that you've given seven percent to the people you definitely tell them that they must live below par you want to add really other than i would add, add to it to support what elton said and the one thing i would add is that it is grossly inadequate given the fact with the, the difficulty covid had already brought on the people and now with this, it, make, it would make life much more difficult. But having considered that in 2020, they were, you had no increase. And in 2021, you wait until the end of the year to announce a 7% increase. Which means if you, even if you take that by half, 3.5 for 2020, 3.5 for 2021. And Elton is saying that the skyrocketing prices are basically this is not even a drop in the ocean right. to, to uh, deal with that so how are people really go going to manage continue to manage in relation to their livelihoods and so on with seven percent is he if the, given the, sorry given mm -hmm. the fact that they're gonna say that he have heard no one raise an alarm or make any issue with it is it goes to show as an individual, I can't do anything because if the mass sit down and accept it, well, then they got, they, they got what they deserve. There have been quite a, a lot of comments. People are using social media now as a platform for airing their grievances. Um, there have been a lot of outcry on the social media. And um, even last evening, Lincoln Lewis was on uh, David Hines' program, Politics 101. And uh, last night or the night before, are uh, they crying the, um, the yes, uh, Lincoln? It's all well and good for Lincoln, the union boss, Elton McRae, the pensioner, to say, but I'm talking of the people who are directly affected. Affected, they are maybe they have been beaten into submission, right? That. They don't want, no, everybody, well, at least it's something. I ain't want to lose my work. I mean, earlier in this administration, people were fired. We had reportedly over 1,000 people fired. And you see, you, one would have expected you would have seen at least 600 of those, those people protesting on the road. 
they didn't come forward. So the thing is, people are these yeah, things. They, are, they, they just decide what comes at do. And it extends not only at the national level, but it co as we will discuss when it comes to my community, where we are here to what we are here to discuss, people are just complacent and accept whatever comes their way. Scared of authority figures. And, you know, but I, mean, I, 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 I am hopeful that you know the, uh, that people are willing to. You see, they they play on the season. They always wait until it's the end of the yes, year. Yes, you see, now you give me when, seven yeah. percent. That will look big, so I can spend for Christmas. I will have a merry, merry Christmas. And they have <laughs> used also. They have been mentioned all of these handouts that they'll be giving the 25,000 but mm -hmm. you cannot deal with mere stop gap measures what happened to the box and proposal from professor thomas right. stop. why don't we deal with that you know we are giving sugar workers who have been displaced a quarter of a million but the public servants as yet and also you're training those ex former sugar workers for jobs within the oil sector, which will be much, I, which I anticipate will be high-paying jobs. Yeah. So you're dealing with your constituents, you know, and we are not dealing with the constituents of another part that will support another political formation. So it's a racist-oriented uh, well, delivery of it's, the states. Uh, the delivery which is biased, mm -hmm. politically biased. And as you say, maybe there's a racial link there too. Well, let's hope that, you know, the, because I, I, I <laughs> people are basically not willing to fight for themselves, as you pointed out. And I don't know how long it's going to continue, but unless there is a groundswell from people to fight for change, uh, they will not. You will not have any change. You will not have any change. And um, the PPE is not unaware. In their budget, they listed all these, you know, 25,000 to pensioners, this to that. But you need a sustained economic injection that people can live by from month to month. You understand? Yeah. You give them $25,000 today. It's, it's spent out within a week, and they are back to the <laughs> state of poverty that they've been in. There, there is no real <laughs> sustained relief by doing that, and they have no sense. I mean, Lincoln was saying, and I think David Hines was making the point that it is a deliberate attempt to keep, you know, black people in a state of subjection in poverty, and to have them always, you know, not being independent in in the management of their own lives and affairs. Uh, I think there is a lot to that with which we can agree uh, since the PPP came into office. And you notice what they have been doing. They have a pattern. Since 1999, when you had that um, Professor Thomas and, and the others were part of that Development. No, strategy. it wasn't a development <laughs> strategy. They, they had a an arbitration tribunal. Oh, right. Arms, Armstrong was it? Doctor Arby Armstrong. Right. Where they gave a substantial increase, twenty five percent and so on, to public servants. But subsequent to that, uh, that twenty five percent, they basically every year, with the kind of increases and non increases. They took it back from they you so that back. you went back yeah. to the state of poverty that you were in. Mm -hmm. Despite the, the angst that we have with the Granger administration, you did get increases. Yes. And with the PPP now, you see them trying to even... Walk back. Yeah, walk back that increase so that you, you are not going forward in any sense, that yeah. you are kept in Dependency that is the name of the game. And you must depend on us for your your existence and you know so what that is how you gain control yeah, right. yeah. And let's hope that people are willing to fight um, we 
because it's it's really outrageous and it's uh, it's disgusting to say the least. But all have to be strong. I don't know. We have a very. I mean, I'm not taking away from your time, but I mean, I'm so. We have policemen and, and soldiers and, and so on who are so pathetic in their approach to dealing with your own affairs. <laughs> I, can't, I can't understand this thing. I, I don't know, I mean, they don't say anything. They don't, they're not proactive in their own interests. I mean, the no, government can do them whatever it wants. The thing is, as a friend of mine once said, our education system and this, or the, the religion to which most of us subscribe tells us that we must be obedient servants. It's training us to serve. It's never telling us that we must look for liberation. Right? There, this liberation and freedom is something strange to some of us. You know, you know, I must listen to my boss. My boss will look after me and, you know, whatever he does out is good enough for me. I mean, there is nothing different from when we were being forced into slavery as, a, as against today, because we, co we must be compliant and our education and religious indoctrination has ensured that. So, and also I would like to add that in the police force, the chain of command dictates that you obey those above you. Because if you don't obey, you will be disciplined. I see. <laughs> so, certain things you wouldn't find police and soldiers being involved in. They cannot yeah, be unionized. They, they cannot be. They can't. Know. Police cannot be unionized. So they soldiers. can't give an opinion or anything. No. Such. They can If they give they, an opinion, they, they have to give it this. privately. They can't come out in public and say it. Yeah, but there are instances where. As a body, you have wholesale rejection of punitive measures like this that the government has uh, implemented upon the people. You right. remember the famous story of Ramnarain? When he and the then Minister of Home Affairs had a difference in terms of two of them making two different statements. And Ram Narayan ended up being the one that, that was made to suffer. Anyway, I, I am still saying that it boils down to metal, backbone, and a willingness to, to stand up. Right? You see, <laughs> and we don't have uh, my brother, we need to put this thing into context. If I was trained, I was cush conditioned into, to, into one way, I cannot change, I cannot just switch overnight. No, there's no electric switch on and off. Mm -hmm. My program says this is where I go and I continue going so, because so there why, is why, safety. Why, why you put that? Some of us were <laughs> exposed. <laughs> no, he, he can tell because one, he is not presently employed by the government oh, and okay. two, he is not a military person. You know, you know, no, no. You see, no, say even the growing up, the military itself, growing up, you know, there were some of us who were lucky to meet or interact with some individuals. Okay. And I will name one of the individuals I interacted with as a young man. Brother Iyusi Kwayana. Okay. Right? I interacted so with that. So your education was different. <laughs> My education was different. <laughs> okay. Maybe in a county lessons. <laughs> okay. I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, you're here as representatives of the uh, Better for Acting community. Both of you are part of the um, 8th of May, Eight of May mm -hmm. uh, movement, which uh, took part in the last local government, local government elections, elections um, last time around. And the last time you were here, you mentioned that, uh, Elton, at least you said you were supposed to be uh, on the council. You were. Yeah. But what, is the, what are the developments in relation to uh, before I go to the current situation, I would like our viewers to understand what is 8th of May all about. The 8th of May movement, the name 8th of May 
came from the date on which our community was bought by our four parents. Okay. It was on the 8th of May, 1840. So we, in honoring, commemorating, and going after their beliefs, we feel that what they strive, strive for was good for our community, so we want to bring them back into the community, their thoughts, their field, into the, our community. So we named ourselves Eight of May Movement, and because the focus should be what they had, the ideas they had for the, for the community, we still feel they are pertinent. Okay. It was all about self-reliance, you know. So we do not, we feel our community should not be governed by forces alien to the community where, where it's not necessary. We should not adhere to those forces. And so when it was, when in terms of local government, we felt that within the community we have adequate ideas and people who, who can think adequately for the community. We don't need to be, we don't feel like we needed to be guided by the national political parties, the PNC, APNU, PPP, AFC, whatever they be. Because those parties had agendas which at times may not, may be conflicting with what is our uh, desire for the community. So basically I wanted that to be on the table first. So it's the end of May a uh, movement that commemorates emancipation and, and these activities every year. Yes, we are part of that. Okay. So it's more than one movement that does that, right? You said you're part of that. No, no, it uh, may be do those things that we, we, we embody that kind of thing. Okay. Right? Though it is the community was bought by Africans, it uh, may also recognize that we have others that came into the, our community which our four parents approved of, and we shall not in any way want to make those people uncomfortable. Okay. So you took part in the elections on the basis of uh, the idea that BB should govern itself. Yes. Residents and whatever working. As much as possible within um, that scenario of the local government. But you competed against the major political parties and, and so on. Give us a refresher on how that came out yeah, in terms of the results and and the eventual composition of the council. Well, let the leader of the list speak. Actually, when we took back the results, the results was as follows. Um, AP and UAFC got eight seats. AP and UAFC did not. It was AP and UAFC. AP and U got eight seats. PPP got six and the eight of May got four. Okay. Uh, that, and that was the composition of the council because it's an 18 seat council. Okay. So, uh, all right. So you all had to have some agreement in terms of chairmanship and... No, we <laughs> weren't a part of that because the APNU felt that eight of May would not have worked in their best interest. Mm -hmm. So they linked with the other party and you could imagine they had eight seats and the PPP had six seats, I've gotten six seats. And yet the PPP could have gained the vice chairman of the community, vice chairmanship of the community. And excluded. Well, yeah, I and can, excluded it to me. I can back up on that, you know. Coming into the elections, there was a mantra which was repeated on every APNU meeting platform. A vote for the 8th of May is a vote to the PPP. In other words, they were putting the villagers who may have wanted to support 8th of May into a situation where they had to choose between being considered PPP supporters or APNU supporters. And then they so that is where they were able to al separate the people and out of that elections, you know, until now, I would say there is still a rift in the village but among I'm those who would like to support it of me and those who uh, supported APNU at the general at that meeting. Even though the eight of May supporters, well, I you know basically are APNU, AFC, 
but you were in on a drive to make it a community a communal community driven led community right. driven and led but the friend, friend judge was preaching that kind of yes message so yes but you see nationally. but you see this goes back not only from because this was not only touted by the people who were um city vying for council seats mm -hmm. it was touted from by the regional chairman mm -hmm. by the person who was managing the apnu's uh, campaign on the east coast that is mr basil williams all of them felt so then promoted really it to, as if it, it was, was a matter of mouthing yeah uh, but it wasn't a generally supported position party position it was just a public well i don't know if that was the party's opinion but i'm saying these were senior functionaries within the apnu who were doing this uh, supporting this kind of thing all right so to cause fracture so, in so our a village vote for the, the the 8th of may would have been a vote for the ppp PPP. you have that at the national elections also yeah, with smaller political parties yes like the wp and so on right but so, uh, you were saying that there was a turnaround. Uh, this turnaround where you were excluded eventually and there was a collusion uh, between the yeah. very AP and you and the PVP. How does that figure in light of what mm. they were saying? Uh, there is a turnaround in terms of... Now, if they're saying that a vote for the 8th of May is a vote for the PPP and then... That was prior to the elections. Prior to the elections. Yeah. After the elections now. After the elections, we got the results. I understand. But I am saying that if you're saying, you're suggesting that the 8th of May is bad because it is... Support it, it does it, ties with right. the PPP. PPP. Now you turn around with, to join with the PPP to come against the 8th of May. Better That's what you're doing. Yes. <laughs> That's what they are doing today. Uh -huh. So much so that there are issues raised in the councilmen if you think... Now, our position today is... We should have been on the council, myself and Mr. Benfield here, as replacement councillors to two councillors who could not have uh, Continue continued the under the situation for personal reasons. And they were fed up with the mannerism in which the council was being manipulated by the, by the groups, the two groups against the 8th of May members. So, we were supposed to be re replacement councils. This replacement note came after some dalliance from Mr. Lowenfield. It was signed by him on the 16th of August, was it? It was, I wouldn't say, I don't think it's right for you to say dalliance, the dalliance by Mr. Lowenfield. No, no, not dalliance by okay, Mr. Okay. The dalliance from the council, oh, okay. because they should have supplied information to GCOM. Which they, which they delayed. Which they keep delaying. Eventually, Mr. Lowenfield signed sometime in the mid August. I wrote to Mr. Lowenfield asking him to extract the two names. And he did that. The letter was signed on the 16th of August. I took the letter to the NDC and handed it over to the overseer. Lo and behold, on the 18th of August, there were no council meeting between the 16th and the 18th. 18th should have been the statutory no, meeting. The, the statutory meeting should have been the 19th. 19th. But by the 18th, a letter was sent to the chair, GCOM chairman, retired Justice Gladys Singh, inquiring if Mr. Lone Field have the authority to sign the letter extracting the two councillors, the two persons from the list, which that was his sole responsibility. Mm. The letter was signed when he, when he had withdrawn all his court case against GCOM. But was, he was still there. He was there still in order to set everything straight before he leave. And that letter was signed on that day. But the strange thing, is only there's no part of the law which allows the council to decide whether a council must swear in, whether an individual must swear in or not. That is the sole responsibility of the overseer. 
whoever is he or she. Mm -hmm. Now the overseer authority uh, stops by after she received the letter, she sole authority is to administer the oh. oath of office. Nothing more. Stop right there. So who signed the letter to GCOM? The oh, overseer see. signed a letter to GCOM. Okay. Alright? Mm -hmm. But the strange thing, as I said... Who is the overseer? Michelle Otto. Okay. The strange thing, as I said, there were no meeting of the council between the 16th and the 18th when this letter was dispatched. Mm -hmm. So on what authority, whose authority this letter was dispatched to the chairman of GCOM? No, between council meetings, statutory meetings, the, old, the sole person who can make a decision in the name of the council and to be ratified after is the chairman. Yeah, Yet, I was told by the PPP council, never come about that there was a statutory meeting. But the chairman did not attend. And he chaired that statutory meeting. I asked Mr. Kamabaj, who were the other people at that meeting? Until today, he cannot respond. So, the statutory meeting, is it suggesting that the statutory meeting made the decision to... Yes. That is what he wants to suggest. Uh, we know that the statutory meeting was on the 19th. and on that scheduled for the 19th. Scheduled for the 19th. The meeting did not take place. Take place because... That, they, they, they were locked. They, they, they locked quorum. No, they instructed the PPP no, members not to I turn up. I, <laughs> I and the APA if, members didn't turn I don't up know too. if that instructed, but I know they weren't a quorum. So the meeting could not have been held. By the way, that's the only meeting since this council was in place that there was no quorum. So isn't that strange? Okay. <laughs> However, after the letter was dispatched. We turned up, but the meeting was the following week because after they didn't have a quorum, they postponed the meeting, they rescheduled the meeting for the following Thursday. We turned up, we were told that we can't swear in because they're querying whether loan field have the authority to sign the letter or not. We waited September month, um, September month we turned up, the same thing. November, October. October, the same thing. Tur um, Wednesday gone, we, I made contact with GCOM, the staff at GCOM. And we were told that a decision has already been made by the commission that Mr. Lonefield let her stand. And that the overseer should make a or make arrangement at the earliest possible time for us to be sworn in. That was since last week Thursday. We were also informed that the overseer was informed that the letter is ready and she promised to pick the letter up. The Thursday. She didn't send for the Thursday night, she didn't go, she didn't send for the Friday, and she didn't up to Monday. I call again. We were told that she didn't pick up the letter. We asked that an electronic copy be sent to her. An electronic copy of the letter was sent to her. Yet the overseer could have said yesterday at the statutory meeting that she only received the correspondence from GCOM five minutes after two, the day before the meeting. No, she didn't say the chairman said that. But it is in the letter. Yes. So it's the overseer and it was signed by the overseer. Okay. Right? Which is totally inaccurate. So it's a clear picture for some strange reason that just don't want it to me sitting on the council. So or the to me members. So the the two members that you spoke about that had uh, opted to to give their positions to you know, abdicate their positions. Are they still sitting in? No, no they can't. They, the seat is vacant. The seats are vacant. The seats are vacant. So then there is no representation. No. One council, council is there, Mr. Glasgow. Okay. Because I, I had uh, uh, Desmond Trotman and uh, Vincent Alexander here only uh, two weeks ago, and they were uh, expressing the concern that 
GCOM is part of the, you know, the delay in relation to your being sworn in as councillors because uh, they were talking about the very fact that uh, the query about his uh, legitimacy yes. in terms of signing and, and that, and they were arguing that the man was still officially at work, at, work at the so time on. that he was signed the letter at the time he signed the letter so, so if if this man's signature wasn't legitimate mm -hmm. how then his signature was used to sign checks and things for staff to be paid right. yeah the thing is so there is movement forward Yes, yes, there is movement. Finally, forward. there is movement there is forward. Movement forward. Okay. But but and lo and, and and yesterday at yesterday's meeting, when 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 we turned up, we were subsequently given a letter informing us that the swearing in ceremony for us would be on Next the sixteenth of December. The sixteenth of December. Now, a simple simple matter like that. You need a whole month to prepare for swearing in of two councillors, mm -hmm. two individuals. You need a whole month to prepare. Is what we swearing in the president of the Cooperative Republic? No, Zion? the president was sworn in hours after the announcement yeah, was made the last time. Yeah, we had presidents who were sworn in uh, even before the. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is this big issue? What, what is this big issue? Yeah. What is this I big mean. issue? And then. I was to, I went, I went to check the letter last night, read the letter last night. It was quite surprising that the overseer asking for two photo, two um, passport size photograph, a copy of my um, ID, ID card, card and a copy of my board. So she, she have no authority to ask her that that information was already provided to GCOM. So, the, uh, the overseer's sole responsibility is to administer the oath and nothing more. The overseer don't this. can't prepare a, a certificate of employment for me that has to come from GCOM and GCOM has that information. Yeah. They need it for that. So I don't know why the overseer is asking me to provide two passport size pictures for what? What she's going to do with it? Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> she probably wants it. I don't know. I mean, well, I don't know what is the overseer's game plan, but as I told them yesterday at the meeting, there was adequate time between that two or five and yesterday. She really wanted to get us to bring to request of us those things for yesterday. But according to the chairman, that he is the person who chairs the meeting, and council can only act on something if they were informed seven days before. In other words, they're saying that. GCOM had, it, had to inform them seven days before that they wish. That's nonsense. To, that's <laughs> nonsense. That, that they wish to have two councils replaced seven days prior to, to that. And the lie start is the lie seventy two hours. Yeah, but GCOM that is not even for G for no, the GCOM issue. GCOM, the the council right. is a lower statutory body than GCOM. So I don't know, but I told the council yesterday that I will have to report. To, I, I I have to protest to the to the local government commission and to GCOM about the uh, the mannerism of the counts of the, uh, the, overseer. the overseer where she wants to flout the laws of Guyana mm -hmm. at our convenience. He said, well, you can do that, but, but with this council, I am the chair of the council and I can only go by what my overseer says. But the council has no 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 authority in, in the matter. Yeah, it's it's not a council. And it's, that is I'm not a council matter. That because the thing is, from my pers personal position, is that it seems as if there are a number of issues that these people want to have ratified before we are on, become on the council because. There is a matter on the table for the sale of Bagdam lands in Beavy. A mat an issue which some of us in the community feel should not go forward. Mm -hmm. So, including myself. Okay, right? Then so probably they want that to go. There are issues related to the bylaws uh, pertaining to uh, structures in the village. Again, 
flouting the laws. There are issues pertaining to lease of roads in the village. All of these things they want to, they probably want to ensure that they pass. But I will have to seek legal advice as to whether, even if these things are passed, if they can be challenged. The sale of backlands, I mean, the sale of backlands, I mean, by the sale. Okay. There's a company, and I will call the name of the company, John Finance Limited, has approached the BV Triumph Council for 200 acres of land in what we call Section E. Is Section E and F or G, F and G, whichever, in the backlands of BV. Those lands are farmed or were farmed by families, right? Because presently for the past 40 plus years, we have been denied access. The access canals were blocked so we could not have gone to those lands they have done some clearing but not into that, into that area recently so we have continued paying our rates and taxes for those lands some families the families were given lease for those lands and we've been paying our lease at least my family has paid our lease up to date on those lands now the council wants to sell those lands some of those lands, people have transport for those lands. The council still wants to sell it because the council is saying that it belongs to them. Uh, especially one council, the PPP council, Neville Cumberbatch, who, by all, for all intents and purposes, behave as if he's the chairman because he's the one who made the decision to instruct Miss Otto to write to GCOM. The chairman was no way in, the, in position. I will say it and I will defend it. <laughs> But you gotta be careful, you're saying. Yes, right? you gotta be careful, <laughs> and, and I would, I would like to caution right, with that. They sue you. They gonna sue the station. They sue the station. Oh, I would like you. I would like you to be very so, cautious. Well, that. I will beg pardon to the station, but I will absorb whatever comes <laughs> <laughs> that way. Okay. All right. Um, the thing is, uh, the once you have the lease and you're paying a lease up to date, the way the villages function. I mean, they don't. Some of them don't give you a, a written lease as such, uh, but in some they record you have a record yeah. of payment, and that in itself uh, gives you yeah, a right to the gives land. You right to the land. So no, no, no well, council can I, forfeit that. But a strange that. thing. I remember hearing yeah. my mother saying when I, some way back in the sixties that we got a 99 year lease on yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's possible. It depends on the nature on of those the properties. different communities and, and, and how they treat with it. So yes. I don't know if there was a written document. I intend to go looking for that document if it's written. There's a strange, the, the, the strange thing about it also is that this, the present council seems to be in a drive <laughs> to get rid of all the lands that <laughs> either is reserved or what they believe the council own. It seems to be a natural way. And my understanding, for a council to remain relevant, they have to have immovable assets. Yeah. An immovable asset is land. But it, it's, a, it's critical too, to future development. Of the for community. the village. Yeah. Now, like because I, there may be things like you want to put up an abattoir, you want to do, you know, relocate your market, you want to... And, and I'm asking the question, the young people of the village, with the money, with the councils acting now, getting rid of land, what the young people have to look forward to, right. look forward for in the village. That's one of the key things. I mean, I am a villager. I'm a Boxonian. And my key concern is preservation of village lands for future generations. Yeah. All right? Um, We've had cases in Buxton where a former chairman and the council had given out a whole... I mean, one guy got a lot of land through uh, some kind of means. He would get Buxonians to get the lease from the council. And then it and automatically then ended up to him. Ended up in his hand and so on. But for me, um, even though 2002 to 2005 was a bad era in the scheme of things, it served Buxton in a sense well in terms of getting rid of, of some of those, of some of those <laughs> people who would have found their way in, in the process of appropriating land to belong to the village. And in my 
tenure as chairman, I mean, I, I sought to ensure that Boxonians were given yeah. access well, to You the see, land. I must right? say something uh, now. Box, no. the, the way lands were uh, governed in Boxon and lands in Beefy, in Beefy, all the back lands were uh, owned or leased to individuals. While in Boxon, there is a lot of communal lands. So there was diff there's a difference, right? So people could have come to Boxton and say, well, uh, the no, 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 it's, it's, a same, it's a similar thing, you know. It's no, a no. similar, it's a similar approach. Let me explain what happens. I mean, you have, you go, you talk about, your employees are different. We have Prime off, we have young employees and so on. Yeah, yeah. The villages got a second and third debt that they got mm. a right, a lease from the Queen. Yeah to use those second and third that to enhance, continue their agricultural processes and so on. Because remember the villages? Yeah, the right. crown lands. Right, what those were we call crown lands. We refer to crown lands. But those crown lands, even though they were crown lands, villagers had access. Had access to them, mm -hmm. right? And the names are in the record. If you kept your uh, standing by paying, paying your lease, you had the right to the too. right to that. Right, mm -hmm. so um, you call it a lease. It's it's the same kind of arrangement. Yeah, but right? what I understood, maybe I'm wrong, that Boxonians until recently did not have transport for their land. It was all communally owned. No, 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 that is not true. That's not true. <laughs> there was some communal <laughs> land. That's no, not true, because man. we got you. You got land. Uh, that, that, that's not true. That's not true. Um, that's not true. We, we, um, so, we anybody could have gone to Boxton, any Boxton could have gone in the back dam and said, Well, look, I want to farm this year. No, no, Once no, it's no. not being farmed. That is I don't think they would have allowed that, something true. to be such a possibility. Yeah, be a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> that's, another, that's, is another thing. That's why when the RAID program came on stream, they were able to say, Well, look, Boxton can, the program can be applied because, easily in Boxton because, as against in BV. You checked the records and you saw that this stretch people have not paid for it for over a number of years and so you could have you done could have certain things <laughs> okay right? well it okay. Be, we had people if you pay. go in the back dam now in Boxton and you want to within the crown land then you want a plot of land you have to get a bed number and so on and, yeah. then, and go to then, the then go to the council to check to see whose name is recorded there and if they are the of keeping their, mm -hmm. their, their lease and so on. Okay. So you can't just go and take land like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because that was the thing they um, were saying. Boxon got lands, communal lands, and BV uh, don't have communal lands. Uh, well, um, another thing, um, you could imagine a council, our councillors at state of the statutory meeting and discussing giving out a plot of land for housing. And then when some councils raised the issue about villagers getting access to having this land, a councillor can get up and say, who got money got deal? You yes. sitting at a council, you representing the village, <laughs> and you're going to say, who got money got no, deal? No, we, we had a situation where they are people one baby, I mean. Councillors. <laughs> councillors. They are baby. Baronians, you know, we call them, them well, Baronians. Well, from what I understand, <laughs> that the person who made the statement is not a Baronian, and but she's a council. And Baronians encouraging somebody and to, to say something to, like that. And eventually, a very few, let, let's say, I think it's about 80% of the lands were sold not to Baronians. Okay. I'm not sure that I'm accurate, but I know the majority of the lands were sold not to Baroni. Another thing that, another boring issue for me. A council supposed to use its financial resources especially to assist in developing their local economic base. That is how I understand it. Here we have a council that procures food, is, 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 is the stock and the food from the tins, from outside of the village. I have known BV to have about 30 persons who I know for a fact have food handler certificate. 
and you couldn't find none. Nobody in the village that is capable of cooking for the council. At the end of the year, council got one party, staff got another party. So it's not council and staff. Council got their own party, staff got their own party. So that's a, it's, it's, a waste of resources. It's not only that, uh, you're practicing a, it's okay. like it's a little South Africa. Mm -hmm. Or is Animal Farm. Okay, you got to pay for two. Mm -hmm. Sets of music. Yeah. Or is that or is animal farm? Two sets of food. We all equal, but some are equal and some. Mm -hmm. You know. The thing is those are the nonsense. But I'm I'm particularly concerned about, you know, land and because we are in an era where access to land for black people in particular is limited. Right. For farming. And we and, now and are denying our own people. That that is a made a concern to me. You can't get land from the PPP for... I applied, for instance, during the period when the APNU was election around the... I applied long before that. On the highway, I was allocated a plot in Low Creek. Since the PPP, all that was left, I paid all the... the all that was left was for them to sign the lease. Mm -hmm. And then that's where it at. But I, I plan to go <laughs> because I was shown the location. It was I paid to go to to the, the, the survey. survey and everything, and that was done. And I know where the plot is, right? So I intend to go. They ain't signing the lease, right? But um, that is the nature. Of, and oh, yeah. you check the stretch of all along the highway between. Uh, so Dyke and Linden and see who are the occupiers of those lands, right? Who to whom they were given. Yeah. You but understand? Is, we have to be very proactive as young people. We can be we, you can't be reactive. You gotta be proactive. The young people gotta stand up and let people understand that hey, we ain't going on the road. This is what we want and this is where we go. But has there been any, I mean, your uh, a community group, have you called public meetings? Well, no. No, we, no, have, we have no, not. No, we have because not. Because of COVID, okay. you, you cannot call meetings. No, no, I don't know, we but we, we meetings, to, be, I mean. to be factual, we have not really functioned effectively over the past two to three years, mm -hmm. to be honest. And um, it all stemmed from... Even, you see, when Etamir was in control of the council, Etamir had 12 seats prior to the last election. And I can tell you, the very people that we put there, because there were no mechanism for control, the very people did what they feel best served them. Now imagine we had a program, it may have a program we used to run into black football to garner the young people energy and to, to help direct them to something positive. The con this new council, year before the last one we attempted to get it, they deny us permission to use the ground. The very young people that you asked to vote for you. Now, we are running a program for these very young people, but you deny us access to use this gun. Now, we had also had a program we wanted to put lights at the play field. We have gotten eight lights so far. We weren't controlling the lights, meaning that we, a member from A to May, used to go out in the night to turn on the lights for the guys them to get because some of them when they come from work and then they want to practice, allow them to practice, go back later to turn it off. We used to try to maintain the football field to a certain level with the very, some of the very guys used to come out and assist. Now the football field is like a jungle. I, I know we played um, DG Cell football, football game, it was good, football and good. Game and, uh, at BB. Good. 
-huh. And the ground was fairly all right then. Right? If you see it now, mm -hmm. there's a nursery school to That's the it, western yeah. side. I am very concerned for the teachers and the students' Snakes. safety. Snakes and so on. The bush on the eastern side is no, it's no longer grass. Mm -hmm. The bush on the eastern side is higher than the fence. Okay. You can't stand up and the, the police can't stand up and see across the school compound anymore. That's and that was the reason to put in chain link fence so that people can see what is going on kind of small children but the bush is so high now but it, I mean it's strange because uh, many of the grounds and this is something that the PPP did which I wasn't in favor of and I'm still not in favor of the council controls the ground, but they appoint a ground committee to no, manage but the affairs of the ground. Um, if we had used that committee effectively, you could have benefited. Because the main reason behind that, there were certain organizations wasn't giving money to assist in developing grounds to any governmental organization. Mm -hmm. So you had to form a committee. A committee. I'm, saying, I'm saying the council could have... Mm -hmm. what no, well, we had it. Uh, uh -huh. Our council formed the committee. Okay. And I think, I guess that is why we weren't granted certain funds to develop the ground fully, because it wasn't a government control committee. I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Right? Because we realized what was going on, and we tried to use the same situation, tried to use the same method to access these funds. But it wasn't given. And Lauren, uh, some, and I shouldn't say it wasn't given. When part of it was finally given, we weren't there. And history shall speak for itself. But the, the, the government has been giving out tokens to villages. They're in Buxton every week, I mean, giving mm -hmm. lights, doing this. Yeah, they're not. Well, Buxton is. Boxer, they want, no, but they yeah. want to do for box. No, they want uh, to do for box. No, but also <laughs> why be young? No, because we don't we don't have the people who wants to represent us. Okay. You have a set of people they that is clear. People. All they have interest in is themselves. It is clear. You know. Well, hey, hey, we're gonna have why don't you invite them? You got the other right next door why don't, don't you as a, a go on the ground have them in, do an interview film the state of the ground and say this is this what is happening here in Navy uh, why is it that we're not getting help I mean the council has left this to run into this repair we're getting no assistance or before even you do that approach the government well, as it of I mean, have asked uh, Travis yeah. for, for such an interview I needs to get back to me. Go to the government say, well, look, you, you're all over the place saying that you're interested in giving black people help and so on, and you're doing grounds there, you do talk about boxing, you talk. BB needs help. Our ground is, or go to Kashif, Mohammed. Kashif is now a contractor. They don't do good. Yeah, he can't do the ground. He's a contractor. <laughs> He's not a contractor. <laughs> He's doing football no, no. more. <laughs> you know, I get a pavilion <laughs> and all these things. You never know. <laughs> but approach them. You can't. Uh, you, you, the community is in need. They're the government. You talked of pavilion. We have a pavilion I in know, BV, yeah, we have which it. is a... We have a pavilion. It which be is a use accident... <laughs> waiting to happen that pavilion is there bordering the basketball court mm -hmm. which by the way is below ground level so okay. whenever it rains mud moves on the ground in on onto the, the oh. onto the basketball court but it's literally maybe a foot away from the not so close the, not so close. the pavilion is more not so close. <laughs> a little way back to, I mean the new no, one that you have the basketball why, code, the basketball code. code. But why not, for, that not for football. Okay. The it's the basketball court, let's say 
it, it the the tarmac area ends about a foot away from the playing area. What do you area. mean inside the fence where they put the basketball court? Where the fence the basketball court? They fence it now. I think it had a fence. They have a fence. I don't. But I haven't been there for a while. I know the basketball court. You had about a foot away from, from the, the court playing the, area to, to where the, 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 to the where, seating area that they built to where you, you run off the court. And then the seating area started immediately okay, there. Okay. So if you're playing, you can likely run off the playing area into the, into the okay. pavilion. Okay. I mean, this was done, and the council approved the payment f to the contractor. I mean, nobody thought that, well, look, this thing is a danger. Mm -hmm. because no, but um, mm -hmm. who was the contractor? Who was the council? Who was the contractor? The contractor was the contractor. And who was the council? <laughs> no, no. Uh, officially, the contractor was DEFCON. But the person who executed it was the chairman of the village. As the... As the he executed the contract, okay. but he was not the contractor. So, if that's what you want to hear. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, you have concerns about... So, you were saying that you're going to be on the council now. Well, we yeah. should be on the council. I don't know if next month they will hatch another rationale why we shouldn't be because they've been delaying prior to mr blowingfield signing he signed the it document took, it took two years <laughs> two years for them to supply well, the information get the overseer to write a letter informing g come over the vacancy on the council you've been hearing all man i think that I, as the leader of the list, got to write the overseer before the overseer write G. Come, which is nonsense. I am Members not the Members of the council are not cannot, calling up the meeting. I cannot. You should inform G. Come. I cannot yes. declare a council seat vacant. That's the function of the overseer. And if, that's the, if she is the person with the authority to declare the seat vacant, it's only she can report that it's vacant. I can't report it. All you can do is propose who yeah. will fill this. Yeah. Right. So I don't know where this notion came from. Yeah, but it, 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 what does the rule say in terms of absence from statutory? Three meeting? consecutive meeting, and then the overseer right. declares the seat vacant. Okay. It didn't say the chairman declared the seat vacant. The overseer declared the seat vacant. And even then, the people who... They wrote to the council informing that they will not be there. So, so they the resigned. They resigned. So immediately, the overseer, the next ensuing meeting, the overseer should have gotten up and declared those, those seats vacant and moved to have them full. But it's not in their interest to have them full, filled. But, but I'm, I'm particularly concerned, you know, and we're almost out of time, but. I think what you need to do is to get the community involved because all of the villages are growing, mm -hmm. all right? And like I said, we don't know with all the shenanigans of the PPP, their move to redesign GCOM to consolidate their, their power, <laughs> what well. is going to happen to this nation unless we explode in defense of ourselves, we may be consumed consumed uh, and so land and these things that are in our communities we, we need to, to protect them protect and preserve them for the expansion of our communities our villages all right for the future generation we cannot think about ourselves all right and uh, just not think about the future for, for people who are going to be, be there living Maybe 10, 20 years and below. No, we are not looking at, right? the, and that is one of the reasons that BV Triumph NDC is at, at the stage where it is now. When I was in the council, I always used to push and ask with the then chairman Bruce Adams, who the young people we are encouraging to come up and sit here with us so that at the end they can, when we got to move on, they will know what to do, they can take over smoothly. It, it had never happened, man. Look, look what, look the results now. The young people came on board. They don't know heck. They don't know, but they do. What they, the thing is, people are there for self fulfillment. 
they see themselves as being on the council like many who get into government to get for themselves. Look here, sir. Mr. Elton asking the overseer a question. And a councillor, when the over the other side of the table, we say, don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. A councillor doing that. And supposedly the vice chairman of the council. Dictating to the overseer. Telling the overseer what to do. Don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. some real problems here I'm hopeful <laughs> <laughs> Love, that's, that's as serious as it gets <laughs> and before the final thing we're just is repeating it the letter that was signed by loan they received the letter on the 16th and by the 18th a letter could have been been reached to the Chairman of GCOM desk, there were no council meeting where the overseer and a council oh, sat there. By the way, sorry not to cut, cut you. The PPP council, Mr. You're gonna give him No, no, this is what he said at the meeting yesterday. When I asked why, uh, when I mentioned that GCOM informed Miss Oto that there is a document there for her. And she promised GCOM, because that's what was transmitted to me by uh, the personnel from GCOM. She promised that she would have uplifted the letter, as you said. He said that the same way when we wanted to find something from GCOM, we went to GCOM with our letter. GCOM wanted us to get this thing. They would have brought it to us. Okay. That's all. I mean, you... You promised to get something, then people called you. No, you are so powerful that Jacob wants to get something to you, you they must bring it to you and then you will get it on time. And and, and Jacob is a superior body to you. Jacob emailed that document to them, but they are not recognizing that as being informed. Okay. They got the hard copy <coughs> Wednesday afternoon. Era of technology. Yeah. I mean, no, Guyana, no. Is a, Guyana is a backward place. I mean, I can no, tell no, you. No, no, but no. People in Guyana are backward. No, no, no. no. Guyana is a backward place. The very overseer mm -hmm. does act on electronic mail. Okay. So, how conveniently to can't act on this electronic mail? I, mean, I, I don't know. Well, um, well, I just want to make a point that even with legal documents, and when you have legal documents prepared, there is something called a PDF. Mm -hmm. Right, um, that you can email. It's email. You scan it and you email it. You email it. It's not editable, so you know that what is there is, is there. One fax right? can be considered right. legal. When you can you, transmit legal you documents by fax. You can you transmit them, them by to, email to our. They said they're not accepting these things. Yeah. You understand? It's. I mean, we are not moving forward in an electronic age. You must have the person in. But the today we are, we, are, we are going on court by Zoom. Well, well, so, what's happened? <laughs> anyway, gentlemen, I, I, I don't know what. So I hope that, you know, at the council level, that you all are going to get on there. And if you have all these problems that you're talking about, that you're able to make an impact to have them change. You know. Um, and. And uh, as if you ever you have any other issues that you want to raise, it's always um, I would always be willing to have you. And I'm going like to put this on Facebook and so on, send a link to you so that you can. And I would like to take you up on your uh, your offer, not your offer, your suggestion. You can come make yourself available. Then we can make yourself let us go see the committee where you can see the school and the playground that we're talking yeah, about. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Mm. I will. All right, but it's been a pleasure having you again, um, despite your troubles, and I'm hoping that you can get them resolved in some way or other. To the people who have been watching this program, uh, it's been a pleasure being with you again on this program, and I look forward to being with you next week, same time, same channel, for another program of Walter and Drummonds. Thank you very much. Thanks.